Why did this happen? Because the difference between real money and paper money, money which is sunnah and paper money, is that money which is sunnah is money in which the value of the money is in the money. Someone should teach that to the Saudis. Go teach it to the Saudis who want to teach Islam to all the rest of the world. Go teach it to the Saudis. The value of the money is in the money. The definition of the paper money is that the value of the money is no longer in the money. And so the value can be changed. Every time the value is changed, the value goes down. What happens when the value of money goes down? The first thing is that there is a massive transfer of wealth from the masses to that predatory elite, which in this case was the government, Uncle Sam. The masses lost half of their wealth, almost half. That's the first thing that happens when the value of the paper money goes down. What's the second thing that happens? The answer is this. I work for the whole month. I got my salary in gold. Could buy a camel, took it home, <laughs> put it underneath the pillow. Took it off after five years, you could still buy the camel. Ten years, you could still buy the camel. But when I get my salary in paper now, you can buy a camel, take it home, put it underneath the pillow. A few years later, when I take it out, can't buy a camel anymore. Could only buy a jackass now. <laughs> so now I'm beginning to feel like a jackass because someone has ripped me off. Where did my money go? If you could answer that question, where did your money go? Who took your money? And how did they take your money? You would understand the game that they're playing. We used to have men like that. In North America, we had one Islamic scholar who was like that, and then they killed him. A man named Malcolm X. He didn't have a PhD from Al-Azhar, but he could see better than any Sheikh. Who took my money? And how did they take him? Did they take it? Hmm? A few years later, I take the money out of my pillow. Can't buy a jackass anymore. Can only buy a goat. A few years later, can't buy a goat anymore. Can only buy murgi. The jaja. Hmm? Chicken. I mean, you got to eat a lot, a lot of halwa not to be able to see <laughs> that this is haram. The rip-off has taken place. The thieves have looted everything. Our people are now in miserable poverty, destitution, imprisoned in that poverty. Kad al-fakru an yakuna kufra, said the Prophet that this poverty and destitution can lead a people to kufr and that is what is happening in many parts of the world. How is it taking place? They started with gold, paper being redeemable in gold. And then came 1933 when we should have woken up to see their game, but we didn't wake up. So in 1944, at the end of the first war, first second world war, they now, they now uh, consolidated the system in the creation of an international monetary system now. Consolidated. The new international monetary system emerges out of the Bretton Woods Agreement in upstate New York. Every Darululum should make it obligatory for the student to study the Bretton Woods Accord. Hmm? You must study the Bretton Woods Accord. 
to understand monetary economics today so you can understand the subject of riba. Is it taught in the Darul? No, it's not. At Bretton Woods, what did they do? They said, no longer will paper be redeemable in gold. Only one paper will be chosen to be redeemable in gold. All the rest will not. The one paper which was chosen was the US dollar. So the US dollar will be redeemable in gold, but not sterling pound, and not Pakistani rupee, and not Indonesian rupiah, not Australian dollar. No, only one. So this is a major blow to the integrity of money. The second thing that they did was to declare that the only people who could come to Uncle Sam to redeem their paper for gold are governments. You and I can't do it. Only governments, only central banks. So now the entire system has lost 99% of its integrity. It has only 1% left of integrity, but those fellows are still eating halwa. 1% integrity left. That governments, central banks can go to Uncle Sam with their US dollars and demand the gold. Nobody did. From 1944 to 1971, nobody did. The Vietnam War took place in the late 60s and Uncle Sam printed a lot of paper, a lot of paper to finance the war. And Uncle Sam didn't have the gold to back that paper. At Bretton Woods, they had fixed the price of gold at $35 an ounce. Fixed. It, did, it is there in the Bretton Woods Accord. Uncle Sam didn't have the gold <laughs> to back all that paper. So in September 1971, the British government came in one Friday evening, perhaps, with three billion US dollars and said, Uncle Sam, we want the gold. Uncle Sam knew that the game was up. The game was up. Because come Monday morning, guess who is going to be at the front of the line? Saudi Arabia. Or who behind Saudi Arabia? Kuwait. Huh? And a whole long line of people, of government, central banks, we want the gold. So Richard Nixon retired to Camp David. And then on Sunday, he had addressed the American people. And we said, he said, we gave our word. But we don't have to keep our word. We gave our word, but we don't have to keep our word. We will no longer honor our obligation under, under uh, um, Bretton Woods to redeem paper for gold from central banks. And so since September 1971, this may be news for some of you who have been eating halwa. Since September 1971, there is no legal link between paper and gold is gone. Now all that they have to do, those who want to rule the world, <laughs> all that they have to do is to take control of money. Anyone who takes control of money can rule the world.